Hi, my name is Scott Ball. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at UC San Diego. I specialize in adult joint reconstruction. I'm presenting a case today of uh, total knee replacement using uh, ortholine lantern balance uh, using an inverse kinematic alignment workflow. So I started using uh, ortholine mostly just for patient-specific alignment um, in order to really nail those, those bone cuts. Over the last couple of years with lantern balance, I've seen a lot of value in using the balance for an inverse kinematic alignment workflow. Um, if you cut your tibia first, well, then you can assess your gaps and then you can alter your femoral cuts in order to help to balance your knee. Um, obviously, you want to balance the gaps, but you can also balance your varus valgus alignment subtly by just altering your distal femoral cut angle. So the uh, tibia first uh, workflow basically goes expose the proximal tibia and you're going to make your proximal tibial cut. I cut it again to preserve the patient's uh, native joint line obliquity. Next, you're going to assess your gaps. Uh, the lantern balance is going to give you numbers on the medial side and the lateral side, both flexion and extension. Um, and the ultimate goal is you're going to try to create basically just two rectangles. You're going to try to create the rectangle and extension and the rectangle and flexion. Uh, so once you have your gap data for flexion and extension, uh, then you go ahead and uh, set up your, your navigation for your femoral cut. If my proximal tibial cut was in, say, three degrees of varus, uh, then I'm going to set the distal femoral cutting block to begin with at three degrees of valgus because that would overall give you a neutral mechanical alignment. That's going to leave you at zero. Um, so that's where I start. Uh, so then you're going to move on to the rotational or the axial plane. So where are you going to set your distal uh, femoral cut in terms of rotation? If, for instance, your lateral side is two millimeters looser, then you're obviously going to have to externally rotate the implant a little bit to close down that lateral space to give you a balanced uh, flexion space. Uh, my experience has been that it's about a one degree turn or one and a half degree turn or external rotation for every two millimeters that it's looser and that, that'll balance it out. Okay, so this is the uh, case I'm presenting here. This is a 68-year-old female. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward knee. Her uh, alignment, she's just a little bit of varus, no, no major contractures. Her range of motion is good. She has a range of motion of five to 125 degrees and ligaments are stable, no varus thrust. Uh, so, so really straightforward. Her proximal tibial angle is about two to three degrees of varus. So my plan is I'm going to reestablish that proximal tibial obliquity with a two to three degree varus cut. And I'm gonna use a cruciate retaining uh, implant. We're following a tibia first inverse kinematic alignment workflow. We're gonna maintain our joint line obliquity with that two and a half degree proximal tibial cut. Uh, we're gonna get our gaps balanced. We're gonna get the um, varus valgus balance symmetric. And uh, we're going to restore this knee to within three degrees of overall mechanical alignment. So here we are. We have the tibia exposed. We're putting in the, the tibial jig, um, getting everything fixed in place. You match the offset um, both up at the proximal tibia and down at the ankle. And then we're going to register the lateral malleolus and the medial malleolus in order to um, get the center of the ankle. That's how the computer calculates uh, the alignment of the tibia. And then you really just swing the bar um, over until you get it where you want it. In this case, I'm planning to, to uh, make her proximal tibial cut at, at 2.5 degrees varus and at 7.5 of, of posterior slope. That matches her posterior slope. Now we go ahead and um, set the depth of resection. Uh, usually I'm going to take about 9 or 10 millimeters off of the uninvolved side on the proximal tibia. Once I'm totally sure that, that I've got my, my cutting block appropriately aligned, we make our proximal tibial cut. Remove that cut piece of bone, and then we're gonna check the, the extension gap here. Uh, so lantern balance, pretty simple. You just drop it in, make sure those paddles are even on both the medial and lateral condyle. And then we take a read of those numbers, and that shows, in this case, her space is 13 millimeters medial, 11 millimeters lateral. So she's a little bit looser in extension on the medial side. Uh, so now we're gonna go back in and um, check her flexion gap. So again, make sure those paddles are even on the medial and lateral condyle. I have my assistant lift the weight of the femur. I don't wanna distract the knee, but I don't want the weight of the femur sitting on it. And then we turn the torque wrench and we get these numbers, which shows that she's 13 millimeters on the medial side, 15 millimeters on the lateral side in the flexion space. The goal from this point forward is we're, just, we're, making, we're making rectangles. I'm trying to equalize all those numbers. Now we're going to navigate uh, the center of the femoral head with a simple medial lateral flexion extension. That allows the computer to calculate the center of the femoral head. Um, I'm going to start by placing the distal femoral cutting block to the reciprocal of the tibial cut. So in this case, that's two and a half degrees of valgus. I cut two and a half degrees of varus on the tibia. I'm putting two and a half degrees of valgus on the femur just to start. And um, I'm going to put the distal femoral resection guide onto the femur just to see where those paddles touch down onto the distal femur. In this case, She's a little bit looser on the, on the medial side. She's 13 millimeters and 11 millimeters in that extension space. 
I'm gonna, I wanna cut two millimeters less of a distal medial cut in order to balance that extension space. But I also want it to be a full nine millimeters of a medial cut so that it, it maintains the, the balance in uh, extension and flexion. Uh, so when I put those paddles down, you can see here, it's sitting proud on the medial side by about four millimeters when it's already touching down on the lateral side. Um, that's gonna be too much of a correction. That's gonna make her too tight on the medial side. Therefore, I'm just gonna turn the uh, cutting block into a little bit more varus until I see that space close down. I want it to sit proud by about two millimeters. Uh, the nice thing here is as you're turning the screwdriver, you can see on the screen what it's doing to your alignment. So as I'm turning this, I can see it now I'm at zero degrees of valgus and now I can look at the distal femoral paddle and I'm two millimeters proud. So this is gonna give me a balanced uh, extension space and it's gonna put the knee at uh, zero degrees on the femoral side, two and a half degrees on the tibial side, which means this knee is gonna have a residual uh, slight varus alignment uh, in terms of mechanical axis from the center of the femoral head through the knee to the ankle. Uh, to me, that's perfectly acceptable. We're just leaving her a little bit of subtle residual varus, but that's gonna help balance our knee. So I'm just gonna pin this uh, cutting block in place and we're gonna make our distal femoral cut. I think it's important to use the caliper here. I like to know exactly where I am. So, so I measure the distal femoral cut and you can see that, that uh, lateral side cut is a little bit thicker. Um, I measured these with inclusion of the, of the saw blade. We're nine millimeter cut on the medial side, 11 millimeters on the lateral side. So we're, we're right on plan now. So moving to the, to the flexion gap, um, we're a little bit looser on the lateral side. And so I'm going to externally rotate it a little bit. Um, in my experience, for every two millimeters looser lateral, you're gonna have to externally rotate by one to one and a half degrees to close that down. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm uh, just pinning um, our, for our rotational guide and I'm just holding that at basically right in between zero and three, um, which is one and a half degrees of external rotation. Uh, we're gonna pin that in place and then go ahead and make all of these distal femoral cuts. Um, once all the, those cut pieces of bone are removed, I'm, being, I'm gonna remove the uh, medial and lateral menisci. And once I've done all that soft tissue work, I'm gonna reassess my gaps. So you look here in extension, we're at 22 millimeters and symmetric, um, both medial and lateral 22 millimeters. So now we're gonna recheck it in flexion. Uh, we're at 23 degrees, I'm sorry, 23 millimeters medial and 23 millimeters lateral. So that's a really nicely balanced knee. I mean, one millimeter, two millimeter differences, I usually don't worry so much about, but I always move on to the trial phase to see if I can feel any real differences. But if it's within one or two millimeters, I have not really um, felt a, a difference. Um, so here's our alignment and balance grid. Uh, you can see that the alignment, um, we look like we're at two and a half degrees of overall mechanical varus. In terms of balance, we're 22 millimeters and symmetric in the extension space. We're 23 millimeters and, and symmetric in the flexion space. And that just required about a one, one and a half degree um, external rotation of the femoral component. So I'm going to go ahead and trial. Uh, so place our trial insert there. And you can see the knee comes out into full extension very nicely. And you can see this looks really nicely balanced. It felt great. Um, I'm saving the PCL in this case, and the PCL tension felt good. Um, I, I do like to use the medial stabilized type inserts. There's more congruity on that medial side. I think it's kinematically a little bit more normal for the knee. So I'm using one of those MS type inserts here. Um, and then we go ahead and close the knee. And uh, here you go. You can see our post-op x-rays. So looking at our pre-op alignment, she's in a little subtle varus pre-op and uh, you can see the nice correction that we got. Um, she, we know she's a little bit residual varus, but by this x-ray, she doesn't look varus at all. She looks appropriately aligned, and, um, and the lateral view shows nice full extension of the knee.